I appreciate everybody coming out today. Obviously, a, a really exciting time on our campus and a really exciting time across the country today with National Signing Day. Um, really proud of our coaching staff, really proud of um, admissions people on campus, uh, Trisha Killebrew and Student Success, her staff, uh, Chief Johns, you, uh, Police Department, uh, Cafeteria, everybody that helped with our official visits. Appreciate our administration as always, um, giving us the ability and the um, the support to go out and try to recruit and sign a, a really good class, and I think we, I think we did that. Uh, I really do. Uh, I'm going to start uh, by talking about the guys that we got at midyear because they're currently in our football program, going through spring drills, and uh, right now we are in the middle of our skill individual work and our off-season program, getting ready for spring practice, which will start on March the first. Uh, that schedule will be coming out shortly. Uh, so we'll just go through the list right here. Uh, Lee Sean Askew uh, is an offensive lineman we got from uh, he's from Patterson, New Jersey, Monroe College up in New York. We had a relationship with Lee Sean. We've been recruiting him for uh, probably since last summer, early last summer. Lee Sean's an offensive tackle, 6'5", 320 pounder. Uh, in school here, doing really well right now. Really excited about him. Joseph Barton, young man from uh, Walnut, Mississippi, played at Colin uh, as a defensive lineman. I think what you're going to find, we signed four defensive linemen at Christmas. Uh, it transfers, uh, mid-year guys. Uh, Joseph played at Colin, 6'1", 300-pounder. Uh, Joseph has three years remaining. Eight of our 14 guys that we signed at Christmas have or sophomores. So they will have three years remaining to play here at Delta State. I uh, really appreciate, uh, obviously, all those junior college coaches uh, that are in it, you know, to help these young men get out early. Um, Coach Glenn Davis, obviously, who everyone knows, his son, Micah, who, who was an all-everything player here, uh, obviously there at Colin, we really appreciate them. Uh, so Joseph's going to be a really good addition. Um, Caleb Canada is an outside linebacker safety type of player from uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Actually played at uh, Ridgeland High School. Um, he has played at uh, Cahoma Community College. He's a sophomore. He is six foot three, 215 pounds. <laughs> Got a quarterback in this class, Austin Davidson, who played at West Lauderdale High School, Meridian, Mississippi. He will have three years remaining as well. Uh, Austin is a 6'2", 180-pound quarterback, played at Mississippi Gulf Coast down there this year, ended up becoming their starter at the end of the season. Really proud of him. I uh, really like his work ethic. I think he's going to be a really good addition to us offensively. LaMarcus Faulkner from Oxford, Mississippi. LaMarcus is another young man from Colin, defensive lineman, 6'2", 290-pounder. Uh, very athletic, uh, really good body control, really excited about LaMarcus. I think he's a really good cerebral player, obviously a, a, a really smart kid. We're excited about him. From right down the road in Greenwood, Mississippi, Bradron Hodo, who's a young man, offensive lineman from Hines. We think Bradron's a guy that has played all five positions. He's 6'2", 310 pounds, extremely bright young man. Uh, once again, three years remaining, uh, played for Coach Larry Williams at Hines. Uh, wanted to come out here and uh, work on his masters. Got a good plan to get that going in the next three years. Think he's a guy that can play center, guard, or tackle. Really excited about Bradron. Um, defensive back. You know, we lost some good defensive backs a year ago. Obviously, everybody watched Junior Falk play uh, Saturday night in the NFL PA Bowl. But this young man, is, we've been on him for a while, is Malik Jones from Crystal Springs, Mississippi. Uh, 6'1", 175 out of Colin. Uh, we're really excited about Malik. Thinks he brings a lot of energy and athleticism to the secondary. <clears throat> Another young man from Colin, Demario Martin, who is from Columbus, Mississippi. He is a 6'2", 240-pound sophomore uh, from Colin. I uh, have three years remaining uh, because of the COVID year. Uh, Demario is a guy that we're going to project as a bandit, kind of that position Marvin Terry played, uh, outside linebacker. Uh, got a lot of explosion. We're excited about him. Uh, did get one out of the transfer portal, uh, Bernard Porter, uh, a young man from Spartanburg, South Carolina, played at the University of Buffalo, 6'3", um, 190-pound wide receiver, really excited about Bernard. Um, think he can do uh, some really good things over the next two years here at Delta State, really excited about him. Uh, Tamaje Porter, defensive lineman, 6'1", 330 pounds from Cahoma Community College, uh, played at Theodore High School outside of Mobile. Um, I, we're really excited about Tamaje. I think he's got a tremendous upside. 
we're really excited about him. Extremely bright young man, uh, knows what he wants to do. Really excited about him. At the running back position, I know we lost a couple of really good running backs. Uh, we have Kelvin Smith. Uh, Kelvin K.J. Smith played at Mississippi Delta. He's from Heritage Academy um, in Columbus. He's 5'10", 205-pound running back. Uh, extremely bright, really excited about him. He's a sophomore. He will have three years remaining, okay? Another defensive lineman we signed out of Highland Community College, played at Viger High School in Pritchard, Alabama, is E.J. Thomas. Uh, E.J. is 6'1", 295. He will play defensive end for us. We're excited about him. He is a sophomore. He'll have three years remaining as well. Defensive back, one of the best, I thought, in the state of – one of the top guys in the state of Mississippi, Juco, from Pearl, uh, by way of Northwest Community College, is Jarvis Townsend. Really excited about Jarvis. Uh, extremely bright young man, uh, 5'10", 180 pounds. Goes about his business every day. He had one in high school, played for Coach John Perry. Uh, one, obviously, at Northwest. Really excited about him. Uh, and then to round out our mid-year signees, we had a young man – uh, that we know pretty well, Marlon Wyndham uh, from Knoxville County and by way of Cahoma Community College. Marlon is the nephew of Coach Marcus Wyndham, and uh, Marlon is, is, we got a chance to be a really good player here. He's 6'1", 185, got three years left, flies around, a lot of energy. So that rounds out our mid-year guys. Looking at the guys that we were able to sign today, we were signed 14 guys today, really excited about those. We had, starting off, another young man from Viger High School, Defensive back Chris Agee, uh, 6'1", six uh, six foot one seventy five, state champion, Viger, Alabama. I uh, think he's he's got a tremendous upside. We signed a young man from Camden, Arkansas. I had a connection with this young man, uh, obviously uh, from being over there in my home state. Brandon Copeland is a five nine hundred eighty pound uh, slot receiver. Also plays point guard on their basketball team from Camden Fairview. I think he finished in the state of Arkansas. He's the third leading receiver in the state of Arkansas. Uh, really excited about Brandon. Uh, from Lake Providence, Louisiana, Briarfield Academy, Carter Coulard, defensive lineman, six foot three, 260 pounds. Guy played eight man football. Really excited about his upside. Uh, I think he has uh, got a great uh, family. I, I'm really excited. He, he is so excited to be in a statesman. And uh, we've had some great talks over the last few days. We were really lucky to get Carter. A lot of people were on him. Uh, from MRA, Madison Risland Academy, Cam Covey, defensive back, 5'11", 170. Uh, really excited about Cam. Thought some of his best highlights were against some really good players in the state of Mississippi and other states because, you know, they played, they played a team out of Tennessee, played Pulaski Academy out of Arkansas. Thought Cam does a really good job. He's extremely fast, young man. <clears throat> a guy that's going to be playing two sports for us here, Austin Estes. State champion in football from Piedmont, Alabama. He's going to be playing football and baseball here. Uh, wide receiver, extremely explosive. He is 5'9", 170 pounds. Uh, really, really excited about him. Uh, we got on him late, and we just got lucky. Uh, he came in last Friday on a visit, committed to a Sunday. Uh, we we're really, really excited about getting Austin. Uh, Khalil Estrada, linebacker here from Cleveland, Mississippi. This is Coach West. Uh, stepson Chris West had a had a real good uh, um, relationship, obviously with Khalil. We know exactly what we're getting with him. We're getting a guy that works hard, uh, getting a guy that wants to be at Delta State. Already applied, already been admitted. Uh, really excited about Khalil coming here. Also from Piedmont, we got a safety, Omarion Foster, six foot two, one hundred seventy pounds. Uh, think the sky is the limit for Omarion. Got a lot of range. Really, really smart kid. So we were lucky to get him and Austin together to come over here to Delta State. From Slidell, Louisiana, we got a running back, Tamaj Hoffman. Tamaj is 5'9", 185. He's a power lifter. He's explosive. He wears a 2X glove. His hands are really, really big. I know that doesn't mean a lot to everybody, but I look at all that stuff. He's got great hands. He scores touchdowns. He's excited about coming to Delta State. We're excited about him. From Florence, Alabama, Jeremiah Johnson, offensive lineman, 6'3". 300 pounds, uh, looks really good, very mature kid, really excited about him, is a guy that can play inside, is a guy that can play outside, like his versatility. Defensive back from Mobile, Mobile, Christian, uh, Mobile Christian School, who is kind of like their team captain, just great guy, Jaden Lawson, is a defensive back, corner, could play safety, depends on where his body goes from here. He's 5'11", 170 pounds, 
coach's son, team leader, really, really excited about him. We got a tight end in this class, DJ Center, uh, 6'1". He's listed at 225. He's more – he's about 210 right now. He's gained a lot of weight. He was playing at 190. I think he's a really good basketball player as well from Brentwood Academy. I think that when he just starts really focusing on football, he's going to start putting on weight. He, he's got a lot of great ball skills, shows up in big games. I really, really like him. From here locally, and another local guy here in Cleveland, we got a young man from Bio Academy, Joseph Smith, who moved in from to Bio from his senior year from Washington School. Joseph's a really good athlete, 5'11", 175, a lot bigger than what I thought when he when he came on his visit. Uh, really excited about him. He, he's also a good, you know, he can play a lot of different positions. I played quarterback there, played some receiver there, played some defensive back. He also was a punter. Uh, I really like what he brings to our football team. Jakari Williams is a wide receiver from Tampa, Florida, Sickles High School, 6'1", 175. Uh, really excited about him. Think he's extremely smooth. Uh, he'll be an outside receiver type guy, can run, and we're excited about him as well. And then another young man we got from Lake Providence, Louisiana, along with Carter Coulard, was Wydet Williams, Jr. He is 6'1", 185, from General Trask High School in Lake Providence. He's a quarterback. He is extremely athletic. Uh, he will get a shot, obviously, if he wants to be, a, to be a, a chance to compete to be our starting quarterback when he gets here. He is 6'1", 185 pounds. I think the sky's the limit for him as well. One thing I should, I should, that I really want to know, everybody to know about this high school class is I thought they all handled the recruiting process. The right, all these guys did. But our high school class, the average ACT is 22. Uh, which I think is really, really good. It speaks to uh, what we're trying to recruit and also speaks to our university that those guys were attracted to come to this university because of the academics as well as athletics. So 28 new guys, uh, like everybody's going to say, you know, we filled some needs. Everybody says that on signing day. Uh, so that's kind of the, the cliche thing, but we did. We got some really good players that wanted to be at Delta State, and uh, I'm excited about them. So that's our class. Any questions? Looking at the going back to the needs thing after last year, when you when you look at where y'all lost, do you how, how do you feel the the potential in the areas that y'all lost some key players as far as the overall potential? Do you feel that you know in a year or two this this class could really? Oh yeah, I think it, I mean time's gonna tell, you know, and time's gonna tell. Um, recruiting is not perfect. You got me. Um, all these guys have the measurables. All these guys have good tape, and all these guys have good transcripts. So that's what you got to base it off of, you know. Obviously, we feel really good about some of the mid-year guys, especially the ones from the state of Mississippi, because we got to go out and watch those guys play on Thursday nights, you know. That's, that's the thing about our state that not a lot of people from the outside understand, and even sometimes people within our own, our own state don't understand. But it is extremely difficult for us – to go out and get high school kids within the state because of our junior college system and how good it is, especially when they opened up the junior college system, right? So uh, we do a really good job of trying to recruit these kids once they get to the junior college to get them back to us. And I think that's what you saw with some of these guys leaving, especially when they could have returned to their junior college and were, you know, um, they decided they wanted to come on out and go to Delta State and they got three years left, which is not always going to happen. Obviously, it was a weird situation with COVID, but uh, we're really excited about those guys. And, I mean, every one of these guys, we, we, you know, we, we miss, people miss. We're going to miss on a couple of these guys, I and mean, that's just the law of averages. But um, from everything, when our research that we've done, we've got good relationships with all of them, and, and the ones that are here now are working out well, and we feel really good about the ones we signed today um, in the time that we spent with them. When you look at the adversities and things that the – that the pandemic is uh, it has, you know, transfer portal and stuff like that. As far as your coaches and recruiting, talk about the the job they did trying to trying to get these kids. I think they did a great job. Uh, I think they were extremely honest. That's the number one thing you got to be honest in recruiting. Uh, we were extremely honest. We didn't talk about other schools. We we stick to our stuff. Uh, we don't like to negative recruit and things of that nature. We stuck to what we do here and what we believe in here. Um, so I think we did a great job, you know, a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of visits, a lot of guys coming in, uh, but our guys did a great job with it. Coach, you talked about COVID and 
a lot of student athletes getting an extra year from that and bringing in a pretty healthy mid-year class uh, that you already have in program. In your time here, although it's been different and perhaps uptick because of COVID, but that's been an emphasis for you to get guys in the program and kind of get them a leg up or a step ahead, if you will. How much of a focus or not has it been for your team and how have those guys that have been here or have that have started here so far or you know in the past couple of years acclimated to getting into your program in the middle of the year well i think this is this is big you know because um look this spring this spring last spring it kind of semi got back to normal but this spring it feels a lot more normal than it than it has i think any coach will tell you whether whatever the transfer is um Look, guys, we're 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 still going to probably sign two or three more guys before the season starts next year. But you know, if you're looking at a a, a guy that's a transfer that you're you know you it's always good. I mean, heck, man, I'd love to sign high school kids early if we could. I mean, anybody that goes through spring practice is going to have an advantage uh, just because of the off season work, the 15 extra practices that you get. Um, I just think it's big to get acclimated and get comfortable. And what I've seen since I've been here, you know, I've seen a lot of guys that we have signed at this time of year that came into the program in the spring. And in the spring, they didn't quite click. But by the fall, it was now their second time doing everything. And now you started to see what you saw on tape. Um, I'll take a prime example. You look at Veda King. Veda King was an All-American here, right? Well, Veda King got in the summer before his freshman year. I mean, his junior year. Veda King didn't play that much as a junior. He had a couple of good games, but he was a backup. Then he gets to go through spring. Then everything slows down. His senior year becomes an All-American. Uh, so it just takes time sometimes, you know. That's why I keep emphasizing that you got eight guys there that are here right now that still have three years left to play. That's a major deal for us right now, you know. I hope I answered your question right. You talked about the strength of the Mississippi Jucos. It seems like you were able to find athletes from some of the local private school scene and just, you know, even within – an hour, hour and a half drive of Cleveland, you've brought in a lot of talent just from this immediate area, not even expanding even further out into Mississippi. Right. Well, I mean, that's the that's the key, I think, a lot of times is is being able to see guys and, and know as much as you can know about them, you know. Um, so I think we did our research and, you know, look, I get it. And I get right now that there's a lot of high school kids today that are uh, upset because of the portal and because of whatever, I get all that too. Uh, we're still going to try to do our best to keep recruiting and and still looking, you know. And I think we did a really good job today uh, of getting needs and, and bringing quality student athletes to this university uh, that are going to rep represent this program and this university and this community the right way. And I think we've done that. Uh, so we're excited about it. Have you had any sleep the last couple of days? Yeah, last couple of days, but not, not not too bad. Not too bad. Last week was rough. Uh, but, man, it, I mean, once you get those two couple of dead days on Monday and Tuesday, there's really not much you can do. Just, I mean, it is. I've got, I got older, this gray hair. I'm getting older, and I don't worry as much as I used to worry about that kind of stuff. And just to be honest, I felt really good about all these kids. Like, they told us, we're coming. You know, they. I felt really good. They, they gave us their word. They stuck to it. I mean, I never really – Never really flinched on any of them. I, I knew it was going to – they were going to be fine. <clears throat> and there were some guys in the recruiting process. You're always going to lose guys in the recruiting process. I thought the guys we lost handled it the right way for the most part. I thought everything handled it. I mean, it was just – it was good, you know. It's uh, it was good. It was a good recruiting year so far. Still going, though. We never stop. No, no program, I think, ever stops. <laughs> any other questions? Hey, I'm really excited about March 1st. Starting spring practice. I'm also excited about April 22nd. April 22nd will be the ninth annual DSU Family Golf Str Scramble and Drawdown. And, uh, hey, hope, hope everybody comes out tomorrow night and supports our women as we uh, hope to beat MC again. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.